Good morning and happy Easter. Last evening was the most holy of all nights in the church year. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and last evening, and even into today, are all part of what is called the Easter Triduum. This Latin term means three days. Any prayer recited over three days is technically a triduum, but this one is very different and the most sacred prayer in our church. It is in this prayer that we truly immerse ourselves in the Paschal mystery, that mystery which begins with the suffering and death of Jesus suddenly and dramatically shifts with the resurrection of Jesus. That is what Easter is all about. These three days of prayer began with us watching on Thursday one of the most essential elements to our faith, service. As a deacon, I take very seriously that the deacon represents Christ, the servant. The word deacon literally means servant. All priests are ordained deacons first. Fun fact, priests never stop being a deacon even if a priest is ordained a bishop. Perhaps one of the clearest examples for being a deacon was performed by the ultimate deacon who ever lived. That was Christ being a deacon, washing the feet of the disciples. The most critical element of our faith is service. What that means is we cannot simply have faith. We're called to do something more than just simply believe. We're called to serve others. Service requires sacrifice. That is why these three days of prayer and Easter Sunday are so sacred to us in the Catholic Church. We prayerfully reflect on what Christ did to open the very gates of heaven. He endured the very worst of what human sinfulness brings about. The very symbol of our faith, the crucifix, reminds us of what Jesus did for us. So much of what we hear about in Scripture about Jesus consistently points to what we must do to be like him. But that is only part of the story. You see, Christ is with us and is trying to get us to listen, and he knows what is happening to us in our lives right now. He calls us to follow him, not just believe in him. We are called to be like him. Being a Catholic is rooted not just in believing in Jesus. It is also rooted in action. What Jesus, when Jesus hung on the cross, one of the things he said was, I thirst. Many might feel this was simply a man dying a brutal death, and stating that he was exhausted and dehydrated. While all that is true, that is not why Jesus said those words. He was saying at that moment that he thirsts for us. He thirsts for us to follow him. The very first step in following Jesus is to publicly and formally tell others that you believe in him. For us Roman Catholics, that means we tell others that we believe in him and what he built, and that we're willing to act in his name as well. You see, he built the church, the mystical body of Christ. The church is the very means by which we help the world to know and believe in Christ Jesus. How we do that is by doing things to serve others. The Roman Catholic Church is the structure that allows us to do that. Last evening's Easter Vigil is the most sacred and holy liturgy in the church. This continues into today, and we come together as a community to so much more thoughtfully and consciously express our belief in something beyond us, something bigger than any of us. Among the most ancient and sacred traditions in our church is what happened last night. We had with us last evening four individuals, Sandy, Jacqueline, Alexandra, and Adam, who formally told others that they believe in Christ and what he built. 
We, their brothers and sisters in Christ, are called to help them experience what must be done. This is why the church does certain things a certain way. These are visible signs that point us to the divine. This is why we baptize with water, anoint with holy oils, burn incense, light candles, and as Christ himself taught us to do, use bread and wine at that altar over there. Water, oils, incense, candlelight, bread, and wine are things of this world that we can comprehend. These begin to help us slowly uncover the mystery of God's plan. When we use the very words that Christ used and do the things he told us to do, something mysterious and wonderful happens. We modern humans have grown so distant from the simple humanity of Jesus, we often overlook that he is in fact here in our midst as we do those things. Too often we consider him a distant and historical figure more than the truly present, truly loving Son of God that he is. He literally told us he will be here, truly present at that altar and whenever we gather as a group in his name. We heard in last night's gospel that the women were terrified when they encountered the two men in dazzling garments. Peter, after seeing the empty tomb, went home amazed. Today in our gospel, we heard of Mary Magdalene and Peter and others doing a lot of running. These are real flesh and blood people who suddenly had to come to grips with the fact that Jesus was exactly who he says he is. Think about that for a moment. They suddenly realize that Jesus is in fact not a prophet. He really is not merely a man. He is the Son of God. Peter and everyone who at first followed Jesus, the man on earth, suddenly realized the critical importance of doing what Jesus said to do. It was not enough for them to simply walk around and tell people, we believe Jesus is the Son of God, the Christ. They were called by him to action. So are we. Thirty years ago at the Easter Vigil at St. Elizabeth of Hungary Church in Whitehall, Pennsylvania, I was accepted into full communion in the Roman Catholic Church. A few weeks later, I was married to the love of my wife, Kate. Why did this son of German immigrants who never really went to church as a boy decide to become, of all things, a Catholic? I too had an experience that left me feeling amazed and even afraid. I suddenly realized that this Jesus person almost assuredly might actually be who he says he is. So I decided to look into that a little bit more. Ultimately, I decided the church is my home. And I did this journey now for 30 years. And I'm on this journey, and I can tell you, and Father Healy and my brother deacons and many others, in particular my wife, can attest, I'm still learning. In the years since then, I have found one undeniable truth, and I see it over and over again. Jesus is communicating, and too often we humans aren't able to hear him. We can't hear him due to all the noise we create. It sure seems like there's a lot more noise these days. War and pandemics, yeah, that's a lot of noise. So too can be the way we treat others, talk about others, and at times focus too much on ourselves. We need to hear Christ in the silence and in consistent prayer. We also need to hear him in our service of others. Then we will better understand how he calls each of us to action. He compels us to act in his name. To act in his name means we need to be humble. Humble like Christ washing the feet of his disciples. Humble like all those amazing people over the centuries who have transformed the world by impacting just one person's life at one small moment and doing so in the name of Christ. 
Today, when we leave this church and this beautiful liturgy, it is a beginning. It is a start. Last evening for Sandy, Jacqueline, Alexandra, and Adam, who received their sacraments, this is especially true as a beginning. But their witness reminds all of us that we too at Easter begin anew. What they did and they received is a reminder for us all to go forth and to bring the light of Christ to the world that so desperately needs it.